So I'm feeling discouraged with my drawing. But there can be different reasons for this and the way ahead is probably going to be linked with exactly the reason or reasons I'm feeling discouraged. And it's probably linked in some way to my drawing development hasn't progressed in the way I was hoping that it would for whatever reason. So let's look at eight possible reasons for discouragement and hopefully if you're feeling discouraged one or several of these may give you some direction in understanding exactly what's happening for you and help you to chart the best way ahead. My first point is that we can be discouraged in our drawing really for a reason that has nothing to do with the art itself. But that's because the drawing in itself wasn't really important. Maybe we started the drawing because we wanted to work from home or we wanted to create a business where we could sell things without too much ongoing work through things like prints or cards. Perhaps I imagined it would be wonderful to be an influencer, to be some sort of social media success. And drawings seem to be possibly the easiest way that I could do this. Or maybe I actually started with drawing for drawing's sake, but the thought of a home business or social media then took over and I've realized that I'm not getting there with my drawing in the way that I thought was possible. And so I'm feeling discouraged about it all. I know when I did oil painting at one stage, not that long after I'd started, I was really taken with the thought of making lots of paintings to sell and I began to set up this mass production line where I was doing a lot of very similar paintings that I could work on all at once. But what I found was very quickly it all became tedious and a chore. I wasn't taking the care and effort in each one because I was only ever doing a part of one at any one time. And I was losing my motivation to paint anything and if I look back these are the worst paintings that I did. Sometimes we just can't combine our creativity with other very different motivations in a satisfying way. So if you think this might be a reason for your discouragement with your drawing then maybe you need to find a better motivation to draw or choose a different area with which to pursue a home business or a social media presence. But we'll get back to reasons now that are more directly to do with drawing itself. And the second reason I might be feeling discouraged with my drawing is because I'm trying to engage with different learning methods and approaches in it. It's great that we have so many teaching resources available to us online, but we mustn't make the mistake of thinking that they're all mix and match, that they're all compatible with each other. There are different ways of thinking about drawing. There are different ways to draw. There are different methods that we can use to progress our drawing. And different teaching methods can actually be in conflict with each other. And if I don't realize this, I can spend one drawing lesson having watched one video perhaps where I'm trying to draw a certain way. But then my next session, I've watched a different video that encourages me to draw in a different way again. And in the end, I'm not sure what I'm trying to do or why. And none of these sessions build on each other to strengthen skills in a certain area. It's confusing and it stops me mastering any one particular area of drawing skill. Here's an example that involves my teaching method. It's a very common drawing methodology to learn to see the basic shapes, which I agree with, but in our actual drawing to rough the basic shapes out and then to refine them down with greater accuracy and then to add the details onto it. And that method works fine if we're drawing with pencil or with a pencil under drawing where at some point in our drawing we can erase the lines that are part of the roughing out stage. But that method doesn't work for my drawing style where I draw directly in ink where every line I draw on that paper is there at the end of the drawing. So I've developed a way of drawing where I choose a certain starting point based on various factors and then I work outwards with a focus on proportion and alignment as I progress the drawing to its end. Now it would be confusing to try and combine both these methods in the one drawing and to try and master both at once is only going to spread our energy and our focus and that's not going to result in the best progress for our drawing or the best drawings at the end of it. So my advice is whenever we watch a teaching video to think hard, does this really work in with the other teaching videos I've watched and I've found helpful? Or does this make more sense to me than the ones I've watched? And maybe this is a better approach. 
don't think that the volume of videos that we watch is going to improve our drawing. It's by watching ones that are taking us in the direction where we want to go with our drawing in the way that makes most sense for us in our drawing that will be of the best benefit. So choose one or a small number of teachers who all seem to be in the same place so that their focus can help you focus and therefore fast track your drawing development. My third point relates to the last one and that's that some teaching methods may not actually teach me anything of where I'm trying to end up going with my drawing. Let me give an example with another genre of art, painting. If somebody really wanted to learn how to create their own original paintings, say a big wattle tree, such as the one behind me, would you recommend that they buy a paint by numbers set? Well, no, you wouldn't. A paint by numbers set can be a really enjoyable activity. And at the end of it, you possibly can have a really nice looking painting. But if what I want to do is to paint original artworks myself, then a paint by numbers kit is never going to take me into that place. The skills that it may develop in me of applying paint evenly and within lines are not ones that are really going to be useful at all for where I want to go. And I think drawing has an equivalent to the paint by numbers methodology. And it's the drawing teaching videos where the teacher draws something line by line and as they draw it, you draw it as well, line by line, following them. Now again, as with the paint by numbers, it can be an enjoyable experience. And at the end of it, you can have a nice looking drawing. But if what you want to learn to do is to be able to draw it yourself, drawings that nobody has drawn before you, this will not develop the skills you need because when you copy the line work of someone else, what you learn to do is to copy. And while copying is a skill that's very useful if what you want to do is to be a copyist, if what you want to do is to create your own artwork, it hasn't really taken you anywhere in that direction. And I've repeatedly heard frustrated comments of people who've watched and drawn along with many of those videos, get really nice drawings, but then when they go to do their own drawing, they either don't know where to start or the drawing doesn't look anywhere near as good and they get quite discouraged with the whole process. If this rings a bell with you, the problem's not the video and the problem's not your drawing. The problem is simply that this method of creating a drawing is not equipping you with the skills that you will need to create your own drawings. So you might need to find some other videos that teach you to draw rather than just step you through a copy process. This next point is you might not be progressing in your drawing simply because you're spreading yourself too thin. Possibly you're using a wide range of drawing materials. You're using pencils, you're using pens, you're using color, you're using pastels, you're using mixed media. And possibly you're applying all of this drawing into a wide range of subjects. Perhaps you're doing some portraits, you're doing some buildings, you're doing some landscapes, you're doing some animal studies. Perhaps you're also creating anime or other more cartoon-based figures. And all of these areas are great areas to draw. But if you're learning to play the piano, you don't usually pick up a totally different piece every day. You stick with a few pieces that you learn to play very well. If you're learning to swim, you don't normally learn to swim four or five or six different strokes at the same time. You concentrate on one until it starts to become second nature. Because there's far more benefit in learning to draw in one perhaps more narrowed area of media and subject to go deep in the skill level in those areas than there is in doing a lot of things broadly to a shallow level. And then it will be easier for me to shift those skills into other areas. I painted trees in oil paints on canvas for 10 years before I tried to draw them. But when I started to draw them, I was amazed at how many of the lessons I learned in a totally different art field helped me in my drawing going deep in one area. So don't let the choice of art materials, techniques, subjects overwhelm you. Choose the ones that really appeal to you the most. Stick to that one area to really hone your skills in and limit the number of art materials that you use and really become familiar with them, even to the point of sticking with the same brands, because every brand has a different feel and effect. I won't spend as much time on this next point, 
because it's so important that I've actually got five or six videos just on this. But we can often be held back in our drawing in a way that we don't appreciate because we don't realize how vital careful, accurate observation is before we put our pen on paper. Because I can't draw accurately what I haven't seen accurately. We take for granted that we know how to see something because we see things constantly in everyday life, but we don't realize that what we need to see to draw accurately is not the same for what we need to see for everyday life. But if we're going to draw something so it looks right, then we have to be able to see it accurately. But because we don't realize that we failed to observe it carefully enough, we start to put the lines on the paper before we have enough information to do it well. In effect, we start to draw what we think we've seen, not what is actually there. One way of seeing if this is a problem for you is to get someone else to get you a drawing that's the sort of thing you draw that you've not seen before and to put it upside down at a table and you then sit there and without turning it around the right way, you draw an upside down version in whatever style or media you normally use of that drawing. And you're not allowed to look at the reference or your drawing the right way up until you finish them both. If when you look at your drawing, you're surprised at how good it is, in fact, if it's even a bit better than some of the drawings you've done the right way up, then that's a good indication that you don't normally observe the reference carefully enough. Because what the upside down thing does is it forces us to look at the reference more carefully. Because while it's familiar, it's not as familiar as it normally is, so we have to pay more attention to it. If doing that improves your drawing, then you can know that more careful observation is needed in your everyday drawing. And it can be a fun thing to do as well. Working on your drawing skills is only going to be discouraging if the problem with your drawing is your observation, not the actual drawing. Another issue that can really slow down our drawing development and leave us feeling pretty discouraged is that we don't take the time to evaluate, to critique our drawings that we don't identify the mistakes that we're making. And this can be a difficult thing to do because we haven't made them deliberately. Sometimes we can sense that something's not quite right, but we actually can't identify it. It can be very useful to go into someone with a fresh set of eyes, not to get compliments, but to get some direction. Does something not look right here? Even if they can't say what's wrong with it, they may be able to identify an area of our drawing that to them doesn't look right. Because the drawing appears line by line, I can get used to seeing the lines the way they are and lose sight of the fact that some of them aren't quite right. Sometimes looking at my drawing through a camera, because it reduces the size, makes mistakes more obvious. I have often noticed that when I'm videoing my drawing process. Or again, I can hold my drawings up to a mirror and sometimes just that flipping them around changes things enough so that I'm no longer seeing the same thing I've been looking at while I'm drawing. And that can make things that aren't quite right, particularly with things such as perspective, stand out more. Why it's important to try and identify mistakes is not to discourage us more, but to give us a focus for my next drawing. Because most of us tend to make the same mistakes over and over again. And it's because we don't realize that they're mistakes. And because we don't have a class teacher to point them out, we need to work out ways that we can identify these errors ourselves. Another reason we can end up feeling discouraged with our drawing is because we make the mistake of making comparisons. One of the first memes I saw on social media, and possibly the only one I've remembered, is comparison is the thief of joy. And I think it's very true. One of the problems with the online world is I can find that is I can find people who are superb at any activity really easily. And if I'm going to compare myself to them, it's probably in most cases not going to be a particularly encouraging experience. Depending who I might follow, say on Instagram, I can see drawing after drawing that I think I could never draw that. But what I don't realize is that I could be comparing my drawings that are the result of maybe 80, 90, 150 hours of drawing practice with drawings that are the result of 5,000 hours of drawing practice. Not that the number of hours in itself determines how good our work is, but the point is we don't know what the person who's drawn that drawing has put into their drawing process to get there. What we need to do is to learn to be inspired 
by the work of others, not to be discouraged by it. It's certainly not that I want to copy it because that won't teach me the creative processes I need to learn to produce my own work. But I do need to be able to look at it and to see the things that I would like to see in my own work as a focus to help me get there in my own work. Comparing one of my drawings with what comes on my social media feed is a bit like learning to run by competing in the Olympic Games. It's likely not going to be an encouraging way to do it. So we have to learn to accept the fact that we will always be able to find people who are further along in their drawing journey than we might be in ours. And let that become an encouraging thing that, that there are ways we can find to progress instead of being a discouraging thing that it's not worth it simply because I'm not at their level yet. When I started, there were many things I didn't draw. Even in my streetscapes, I didn't put people, I didn't put cars because I couldn't draw them. I didn't draw interior scenes because they were too hard. When I began to use tone, I couldn't use it in interior scenes because how do you draw light? And over time with all of those things, at the right time in my skill development, I learned that there were ways of doing all of those things that worked quite well for me. I was inspired by the work of other people and I used that inspiration to help direct my drawing process. So we need to guard against comparing our work with that of anybody else's. And before I give my final point, I'm Stephen Travers and if you enjoy my channel, if you find it helpful, then please, if you haven't subscribed, hit notifications, leave comments, all of these things really help my channel. My final point is I think often we get discouraged because we're impatient to improve. Possibly this is related to the fact that every day we can see work that is further along than mine. And particularly if I feel I have something of that in me to get out, I can be impatient to see it. I've got to realize that my timeline is my timeline. It's not the same as anyone else's and it will take as long as it takes. And at different seasons in our life, we have more time, more energy available for things such as drawing makes a big difference whether it's a one hour a week activity or whether it's something I can enjoy full time. If I'm impatient, it can lead me to feel like I should be further along than I actually am. And that will be discouraging. I need to learn to enjoy the creative process of drawing rather than having the goal of having a nice picture at the end that I can sell or put in a frame and put on my wall. Hopefully that will happen if that's what we want. But if I learn to enjoy the creative process, then I will always be encouraged in my drawing. So keep drawing. Hope this has been helpful. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.